Well, hi there. Water dragons, like the Australian water dragon and the Chinese water dragon, are stinking rad. They are such cool lizards. Some of the coolest lizards I've ever seen in my whole life. I have just loved them for years and years. They look so cool with the big spikes down their back. They get big and robust and long. Chinese water dragons look a lot like Kind of like iguanas, but with a much better personality. Australian water dragons look like dragons. Uh, go figure. And they're so neat. Just such neat animals. But, given that there are two different species, they're actually not even that closely related to each other, there are some differences between them. And which one of the two, the Chinese water dragon or the Australian water dragon, is the better pet reptile? To try to figure this out, we're going to put the two of them head to head. Which means that our verdict will come down to our three categories, which are awesomeness, because you wouldn't want to own it if it wasn't stinking awesome, expensiveness, and difficulty. So let's start with awesomeness, shall we? Water dragons, both species, are just, well, they're awesome. Basically, it's a lizard that looks like a dragon because it's got big old spikes down its back like Godzilla. It's got a rad tail and just amazing, big, boofy, tough, super dragon features. But act like a combination of a bearded dragon and a monitor lizard, which are two of the coolest personalities a pet lizard could possibly have, but somehow all wrapped up into one neat little package in these guys. Not to mention the fact that they don't drop their tail, which is one of the best things the lizard could possibly not do, and they swim like crocodiles, which, come on now. Both have these cool spikes on their head and on their back, going down their tail. Honestly, I think the spikes are a little bit cooler on the Chinese water dragon, at least on the males. There's considerable sexual dimorphism between males and females of both Chinese water dragons and Australian water dragons. In both cases, the, uh, the males get just more robust. They get bigger heads, bigger bodies, even though they're not a whole lot longer and those spikes on Chinese water dragons get huge. This is a juvenile male. He'll get quite a bit bigger than this, and when he's an adult, those spikes are gonna be huge. In my opinion, Australian water dragons have the cooler pattern of the two, because there, frankly, is a lot more pattern to them. They've kind of got some stripes and masks, and you're showing off. Show off that pattern. They've both got a very similar body type. The basic shape of these dragons is so similar, which is why even though they're not super closely related to one another, they're both called water dragons. They both live in a similar habitat, and they both look a lot alike. The Chinese water dragon, though, is the more spectacularly colored. Bright greens and blues, one of the most beautiful animals you'll ever see. Both have very awesome behaviors, both of them can be extremely handleable, and for this reason, because they are so similar with regard to how awesome they are, the Australian water dragon probably being the more awesomely patterned, and the Chinese water dragon probably being the more beautifully colored, let's just call this round a draw. When it comes to expensiveness, I mean, unless you live in Australia where Chinese water dragons are completely unavailable, the Australian water dragon will be far more expensive. Chinese water dragons will be cheaper, and by cheaper I mean way, way, way cheaper, and that's because Unlike the Australian water dragon, which those will all be captive bred, almost every Chinese water dragon you'll ever see will be an import. And that means that they're brought over in droves and just huge buckets full of dragons, and that is just really hard on them. Not to mention the fact that they've spent time essentially living in the wild, so they'll have a higher parasite load, and then just the stress from being imported, they'll be dehydrated, they will have been fighting and doing other naughty things inside of those bins, and that just takes a toll on these dragons. However, aside from that, everything will be essentially the same price for both. Chinese water dragons get a little bit bigger than Australian water dragons, so you might need to take all of the things you'd need for an Australian water dragon and scale it up just a little bit, but both need a very, very large enclosure. Both of them are gonna need clean water in which they can swim. They're both gonna need both UVA and UVB lighting. They both need places to climb because they're both semi-arboreal. They're both going to need a substrate that helps to hold moisture. They're both going to need lots and lots of insects and other live feeders, just a wide variety of different kinds of insect feeders. The main thing that's going to differentiate them as far as cost up front is going to be that Australian water dragons are going to cost more. They're more expensive because they're captive bred, but they're also a lot more likely to live. 
And if you want your Chinese water dragon to live, you're probably going to make up for a lot of what you saved on the animal by going to the veterinarian a lot. And even if you go to the veterinarian and get it well checked out, it's still going to be more likely to die than a captive bred Australian water dragon. Both of these are just very expensive lizards to keep, to be perfectly honest. For a lizard this size, they're both going to be very expensive to keep, and the costs are going to be kind of negligible between them because you'll pay more for the Australian water dragon, but you'll pay more to keep your Chinese water dragon alive. So this round is also kind of a draw. Which means this whole head-to-head -head is going to come down to difficulty if there's going to be any difference at all. Any semi-aquatic lizard is fairly difficult to keep, and this is largely due to the fact that you're either going to need to be making frequent water changes for a huge water dish, or you're going to essentially need to be keeping an aquarium inside of a lizard enclosure. And that's a pain. That means you're going to need filtration. It means you're probably going to need to heat the water, and you're going to need to deal with water quality issues, all the same sort of things that you deal with with a fish tank. Getting the enclosure right is an issue for both. Lighting, that UVA and UVB lighting is extremely important for them. Humidity is also really important, so that not only are you going to need that large swimming area, but you're going to need a substrate that helps hold moisture really well. This pretty much means screen enclosures are out. Even having a screen lid is probably not going to be ideal for maintaining the humidity that you need unless you live in a climate that's very, very humid. They both are going to require a lot of live feeders, which means that you constantly need to have a diversity of live feeders on hand. Things like dubia roaches, uh, hornworms, superworms, crickets, and other live feeders just in, in droves. And we'll have links to these things down in the description. Actually, all the things we've been talking about here in CARE. If you're thinking about getting a water dragon, you might want to check out these costs. Chinese water dragons of the two are far more likely to be dehydrated and stressed from being imported. They're also more likely to be loaded with parasites. Chinese water dragons, at least as, as larger individuals that weren't raised in captivity, seem to also have difficulty with transparent barriers, which means glass enclosures are kind of out for them. And we already mentioned because of humidity that screen enclosures are out, so housing them becomes kind of complicated. Australian water dragons, largely just due to the fact that they're captive bred instead of farmed or wild caught, they're going to win this round of difficulty. They're just a lot more likely to survive for you. And as a result of winning this round, they win this head-to-head. -head. In conclusion, water dragons, both Australian and Chinese, are awesome lizards, but neither of them are for everyone. Don't let that $20 price tag fool you, because you're getting a $20 lizard, but you're going to spend thousands of dollars to keep it alive if you manage to keep it alive. Both of these species have their pros and cons. Australian water dragons won this whole head-to-head -head essentially because they're captive bred and they're better with transparent barriers. Other than that, they can both be just a fantastic choice. And if you can find a captive bred Chinese water dragon instead of an import, basically all of those problems go away and they're just as good as Australian water dragons. But no matter which one you get, be prepared to spend a lot of money on the enclosure and food for these dragons. And just know that the husbandry is somewhat particular for them. That humidity and lighting are really important for them, and so don't skimp. We have full videos on both the Australian Water Dragon and the Chinese Water Dragon. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. And we'd also like to thank our patrons uh, at Patreon for all their support. If you're interested in supporting us as well, please check out our Patreon account. And we hope to see you real soon. Chinese water dragon versus Australian water dragon, head to head. Take one. <laughs> Clack. Clack. <laughs> Australian water dragon versus Chinese water dragon, head to head. Take two. Click. <laughs> Houdini! Sorry. Should I move in? I know. Uh, We've uh, had it! Let me move that waste basket because he's pushing that. That's making it louder. You're ruining our filming. Waste basket, down. that's his house. That's his home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a waste that's basket. what he likes. I fill it with hay and he can likes it. You, can I move it or is that a specific spot? No, you can move it. He moves it all the time. <laughs> it's a mobile home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Houdini, I want you on your best behavior. Expensiveness and difficulty. <laughs> Why is it such a dysfunctional land? <laughs>
That was pretty good too, right up until the right difficulty got too difficult <laughs> for me. They're gonna need a lot of places to climb. Oh, that was a pretty good jump with a fish tank. 